What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five times getting the 100% wasn't really worth it. So as someone who reviews games pretty regularly, and to make myself stand out, I review them after 100%, a question I will get sometimes is, are there games where I didn't really feel like the 100% was worth it, or it was a good experience, etc.? Now, on the face of it, honestly, that's kind of a hard question to answer, because I'm reviewing these games. So anything I don't enjoy while playing that game becomes part of the review. And then the other half of that is that I do this as a living. So playing games I didn't even enjoy that much, I can still review it, point that out, and then earn a living off of that. So it's more of a complicated question than I think people realize. To answer it nonetheless, simply yes, there are absolutely parts of games that I don't enjoy very much. And naturally, here are five examples. Before we dive in, I do want to say that these aren't necessarily bad games. There are just parts of them that I didn't enjoy and I don't think are really worth a lot of people's time unless you're just super into that one specific thing. Number one on our list, we have Days Gone, or more specifically, the challenges. Days Gone itself, I think, has a pretty cool story to tell, provided you like Deacon. Overall, it was a pretty formulaic open world, but what got to me the most, really, was the challenges. So this is a, I believe it was a DLC originally, but in the PC version, it just comes baked in. The challenges are, of course, just that, challenges, survive, or your motorcycle races, that type of stuff. And the better you do in these, the more stuff you can start out with and then ideally increase your times, etc. And this will translate into benefits for the base game. I would tell you though that I just did not enjoy these challenges at all and it felt very out of place compared to the rest of the game. And unless you're just super into Days Gone, I really wouldn't recommend these. And then at number two on our list, we have Empire of Sin. So overall, Empire of Sin is an okay game. I obviously have reviews of all these, so if you want my full thoughts on Empire of Sin as it's a little complicated, you can click the link in the description below. But overall, Empire of Sin is a game that I think fumbles with some cool ideas. However, the part of the 100% that truly makes that boring is that after probably the first game, you've basically got a grasp of everything this game has to offer you. However, part of my 100% is the achievements, but not all of, and for Empire of Sin in particular, there are a bunch of achievements that are centered around winning a game as each character and then beating one of each character or the gangsters you have available to play as. And it was incredibly tedious to go through each and every one of these and win as them when the game itself didn't really offer any new gameplay to coincide with that. Number three on our list, we have Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, this is a game I do actually like. I overall like Dragon Age Inquisition. I think it's a very fun title for the most part. Unfortunately, though, it's a title that is filled with a lot of side content that just does not matter. A lot of go here, fetch this that adds nothing to the lore, nothing engaging. It's just quests for the sake of quests, and in some ways it kind of feels like an MMO in that the quality of these quests is severely lacking. And while I enjoyed Dragon Age Inquisition overall, what I did not enjoy was going around wrapping up all these little tedious quests that, again, just didn't really offer anything in terms of the overall experience. It was just game time for the sake of game time. And then at number four on the list, we have Divinity Dragon Commander. Now, this is a game I have not actually reviewed. It's the only one I haven't reviewed. But the channel here kind of got its start on the back of things like Divinity Lore for the Divinity series, of course, which included Divinity Dragon Commander. So I actually got 100% on this long before I started reviewing games, or at least regularly. My main purpose for doing it was just that I wanted to do everything you could do for every Divinity game as I was covering the lore, etc. for the series. So for this one, there should actually be like a story of video. But Dragon Commander is a weird game. I honestly... I I don't know that I would recommend playing it to just about anyone. It's such an odd title. It is a mix of real-time strategy with decisions that will then impact your troops, and weirdly enough, it plays like uh, the board game Risk, in my opinion, which overall is a bit of an odd one. Just by itself, kind of a strange game, but you know, not exactly negative, right? The reason I wouldn't actually consider 100%ing this game worth it is because it is so far detached from the rest of the Divinity series. The game itself takes place about 10,000 years before the next one chronologically, in terms of the Rivalon timeline. And at the end of Dragon Commander, they kind of give a reason to wipe all of the technology that you see being used from the face of the Earth, or Rivalon. 
which is why it doesn't appear until later games until you get to Divinity 2 Ego Draconis, not to be confused with Divinity Original Sin 2. But basically, Dragon Commander was this weird gameplay experiment that they kind of just slapped the Divinity stuff on without giving it a lot of thought. And naturally, as a result, it's just a very strange title all around. But last up on our list, we have the one, the only, Pathfinder Kingmaker. This game, I think, takes the cake for games that are not worth 100%. Now, I do think Pathfinder Kingmaker is worth playing, but I would tell you that as someone with a love-hate relationship with this game, I don't think it's worth getting everything done, basically. I would, if I were playing it again for the first time, turn the kingdom management to automatic and just don't care about the achievements at all. Just kind of enjoy the content any way you can. Make it as easy as possible for yourself. Kingmaker is a frustrating game with a lot of timers, and it's a game that will give you as much frustration as it will satisfaction. <laughs> so make it as easy as you can on yourself. And largely because of those reasons, Pathfinder Kingmaker takes the cake for games that I do not think are worth 100%, which is strange because Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, it's not exactly sequel, but next title, if you will, I do think is worth 100% if you've got the time. It will take you hundreds of hours, but trying to 100% Kingmaker really won't add much to the experience, and it is a gigantic headache. Easily one of the most difficult games to 100% that I've personally dealt with. So, there you guys go. There are five games that weren't particularly worth getting 100% on. Certainly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.